I connected to, to the hotspot. Okay, good. Uh, I don't see, I don't see art. I did, I, I text, or I didn't text him. I emailed Art and said, we're, there he is. We're experiencing problems. <laughs> there's Art. Maybe, maybe there's Art. Maybe not. Let's see, I, I, the Zoom has been amazed me so many times. There's Art. Uh, okay, I, either our TV is turned down. Nope, I can't hear you, Art. Can you hear me? This meeting is being recorded. Okay. <laughs> I... Yes, Art can't hear us either. Good, we can talk about it. Let's see if he turns red. No? <laughs> Never stopped you before. Oh, yeah. We pretty much won't say anything behind your back that we wouldn't say it. Microphone. Particularly Art. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me, Art? Art. Barry's asleep. <laughs> See the meeting. Oh. There we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you Woo! hear me? Finally. What uh what's going on anyway? <laughs> uh so so the library is uh experiencing severe internet problems. We can't even connect to their uh to their Wi-Fi. And when we do connect, it is dog slow. So we are connected through Jim's hotspot. Of my phone. Of the phone. That okay. seems to be working. But if we get interrupted or whatever, you'll know why. We're, we're having problems. Okay. We're having issues. I've just ever been amazed by Zoom and the bandwidth they use. And just their amazing outfit. They're pretty dang good, you have to admit. Those guys are pretty on the ball. Um, um, Mr. Barry here will talk a little bit about the, the Flipper Zero for you, but he did not get my email, so he did not bring it with him. But Okay. So we will. Well, I'm, just, I'm just mystified about what it is and what it does and so forth and so on. Well, whenever you're ready. Whenever Barry wants to actually talk, <laughs> it's it's your turn. What? Right? <laughs> what? Just, uh, you might you might have to speak up. A little. I was saying, it's Flipper Zero. I don't know if you've seen it online. There's, it's got a lot of gadgets in it. It's just a little package, like RF uh, sniffer. Um, and it can do playback attacks and capture um, stuff like key fobs and um, your near field cards and read credit cards and stuff like that. Oh, he's got the near field. Uh, uh, your uh, your uh, diabetes sensor is near field, isn't it? NFC. Uh, actually, uh, the recent one is uh, Bluetooth. Yeah. Mine is near field. Oh, yours is near field. Yeah. Well, what yeah. kind do you have, Mike? <laughs> well, I was say, Bluetooth is the least secure thing on the planet. So, yeah. with Wi Fi right behind it. So, near field is actually a little stronger yeah. than usual unless it's done unencrypted, um, which is the problem with like key fobs and stuff it's all plain morris code 
Um, right. That's still me. Oh, that's your gizmo you're talking to? Ah, okay. Look like you fell off a cliff there, man. Yeah. Sugar's down. Sugar's down. You fell off the cliff? That's your new girlfriend, Trevor? Is that what you call her? <laughs> um, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> um, I was having problems with my Crohn's disease causing pain in arthritis in my hips. Mm. So the VA decided that I had bone spurs in my hips and that it would help if they did an injection of cortisone. And oh, yeah. Just before we left, at 7 o'clock in the morning, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, my blood sugars went over 400. They could not be read. And I started giving myself injections of short-acting insulin every two hours through seven o'clock Saturday morning, all the way through the night wow. before they finally came down to where the meter could read the room. <laughs> You'd have been partying that year. So, so are you on a pump, Mike? I'm sorry? Are you on, are a, you pump? on a pump? No, I'm not. Is that a side effect of the cortisone? There was a little paper that yes, said, I, I can tell you that. But it didn't say well, it. It's going to be a lot. It's going to send it through the roof. Well, you lucky it didn't tell you. Well, had I not been paying attention, paying yeah. attention, but you can see how it's plateaued here. Well, Hacker. this. Um, Art probably has gotten these too. There's a report that's generated from the Libra 2 that covers 90 days. And it would make a statistician. There's like 50 pages of graphs and dials and wizards and, and stuff. And I can pull up that day and it just goes boom. <laughs> when it hits 400. Boink. <laughs> it goes like that into the next day. It's like... Wow. What are you doing, Colin? Uh, uh, what are you doing, Colin? Uh, uh, well, you're all right. You doing okay, Art? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I should have. Yeah. I should have. Um... I should have muted myself. That's okay. We we just worried about you though. Yeah, Oh well, thank you. But I just you know swallowed wrong or something. Who knows? Mm. So so anyway, you're on the freestyle Libre two, Mike. That's correct. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm on the same one. Oh, I, I thought uh, you had said you switched over to something else that was Bluetooth. No, 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 no. My version of Freestyle Libre 2 uh, can do either near field or Bluetooth. Okay. Um, what are you passing I around there? But we talked about this several months ago. My old telephone did not have near-field communication. You guys brought me up to speed as to where I was looking at. And so I purchased another phone, and that's all I've been using is I haven't been doing Bluetooth and as I have been doing the near-field. Okay. And then the, the report. What, what version of Android do you have? I'm sorry? What version of Android? What version of Android do you have? I have to look. Mine, I think, is 13. Yeah. Mine just upgraded. Yeah, mine upgraded just, I don't know, in the last week, I guess it was. 
Last update was installed on 5th of October, 2023 at 3.30. Yeah, that's about right. Yep, mine mine upgraded to Android thirteen, and I'm not I'm not real sure I like Android thirteen. Here's parts for this probably parts. Parts parts oh for the helicopter. Did you get the helicopter? I mean, you probably take it a little bit more than I would. I'll take the grandkid out to the park and we'll fly it around. I still haven't even gotten around to finish rebuilding the the RC I got off yet. <laughs> so okay, I just don't like choppers. The, so I've just never gotten one. I don't even play with my quadcopters. The the, the grandkid wanted to, wanted me to get a quadcopter. She wanted to fly a quadcopter around. This will be the next closest thing. It won't cost me an arm and a leg. Nice. Just, I play with it. And I, so if she crashes it, she crashes yeah, it. Oh, yeah. See, I, I think I've got that charger, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I can charge that. Well, I figured that if anyone can charge it, it would be somebody in this room. <laughs> I, I can charge that. That, that should be enough to charge. Yeah. When we were leaving the home today, my wife said, how uh, the washer is going, you think it'll be okay to leave? So we're not charging a lithium ion battery next to the gasoline can in the garage. <laughs> I had uh, so important for me. Okay, so I, I wasn't too far off. Okay. I, I've got I've got a couple of really nice lithium ion chargers that I'm almost positive it's the same connector that works up there. Art, you'd ask about my version, and according to this, it's Android version 13. Yeah, yeah that's we're all on 13 now. We're all on 13 now. Lies. <laughs> Mine's still on seven. What? That is old. What? Oh, yeah, it is. It's an old phone. <laughs> I, uh... Wasn't that like ice? What was the ice cream? Sandwich, like the one after that. Yeah, <laughs> the phone had a hand crank on the side of it. Yeah, I think it had the hand crank on that one. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got my old, an old tablet, an old jelly bean that I still sit in. You know, I play Sudoku on it, it's basically all I do. And one of the grandkids saw it and was trying to get something to, and I'm like, it's old. Yeah. Well, which one is I, I said, I'm pretty sure it's Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean? Man, that's ancient. <laughs> that was top of the line when I bought the tablet. Still and that's when you turn and fire say, fire have fire. you ever seen a punch card? <laughs> that's what I started out with. Yeah. And I look at him and go, I, I went and looked at him and said, and your point is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I play Sudoku on it. I don't care how ancient it is. It works for Sudoku. You need them. Hey. There's three of them. We're, we're having a special event. I gave the fourth Take one away one. and I can't get it back. So you have to <laughs> settle for three. Take one. Get them all. Yeah. If you take one, you gotta take all three of them. That's that's the deal. <laughs> And then the trash came by the door. Yeah. So that tiles exactly for right. the roof. Yeah, you can use them for roof tiles. That 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 one that you're holding in your hand probably is the best one of the three, and it's antique. <laughs> yeah, but it's a 64 gig model. Oh, that that's that's special. Well, <laughs> I have the the other one, which I think the low end for that was four or eight. I was going to say, I, I think I had an so 18 model. I didn't model. realize you could even get that model in the 64. 64. So that has to be an iPad 2. Last gen of the... That's, that's going to be very slow, though. And it was... I'm not discontinuing the iMacs again. Not making money. I apologize. I feel like I interrupted what you were... 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. They just whatever Leroy here, uh, Art had questions with. There's a, there's a lot of YouTube videos on it and people using it for all kinds of stuff. But I mean, it does frequencies so like garage door openers. The I mean, people have a lot of fun toying with uh, Teslas because somebody figured out the codes to pop their charging hatch. Um, you can start certain cars like BMW. Pop if they have the, the starter, remote start installed. Um, Open garage doors? <laughs> it, it does garage doors. Um, it, it does some garage doors, right? It doesn't um, do all of them. I would be really shocked if it can't pair. You might have to pair it to the garage door, but there are so many people that have know how so much of that works and they're not real secure that you can download a module and install on it and probably open a lot of doors. Um, and then uh, some of the part of the reason why they've been banned in a couple countries is because they can control traffic lights yeah. and the you know, emergency service sirens for weather alerts because it's just a pulse code you got to send out on whatever frequency. So they're basically all ISM frequencies. Yeah. And uh, the most common one is the 433.92, yeah, which is but... used for for a lot of stuff. Well, I was under the emergency stuff was like 500 or 600s, but it, it, it'll, it'll sniff out stuff up to like 5 gigahertz or something. So. Oh, yeah? Okay. So it's worth buying one, is you're saying? It, it's a very interesting tinkering toy. Um, there's another company now that's making something called an RF. Um, crap, can't think of the exact name, but it's it's like an eighty bucks motor. It's a little larger, um, so it's a lot more powerful for its range and distance. Because the the Flipper Zero is kind of like. A Swiss Army knife gadget toy for tinkering, where this guy is, you know, not playing by the rules, so he doesn't care that you have to be within a foot or two to read a credit card. It's for the other model. So if you want to read a credit card from, say, you know, across the room, you know. Uh oh. Uh -oh. You can uh you you could probably, you know. Not 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 in a nice little plastic case, but you probably can cobble together something Arduino with the Arduino and oh, a couple of RF modules to do various things if, like the N the N. Uh, if you dig around, there, there's there's like Reddit articles of people bitching about the why in the world you bother to buy a a. a Flipper Zero because you can do all the same stuff and they'll, I mean, they'll tell you what parts and pieces you need to buy to do whatever, and, yeah. you know, to do the same thing with cheaper parts, but it's not all in one little bitty box with a it, screen. And, and it's not a straightforward because you yeah, got it's it. Not, it's not dummy side to where you can just, you know, pull up and say, hey, I want to hack a garage door open, scroll down, click garage door and like pulse yeah. buttons until it pops the door, you know. You got to put that all together yourself with the free or the cheaper models. And see, I'm thinking it wouldn't work on our garage door opener because the codes for opening and closing go through the internet. Or randomized. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. It depends on how, I mean, that. Your, your remote sends off a pulse to something and then software controlled through a web page or something. This is a telephone app. It goes. Tells you the status of your door. Well, it also allows me to open and close it. Yeah. And this goes through the phone system. And when it gets to my house, it gets to my router. And then the router. No, you don't. Um, communicates the Ryobi garage door opener has its own Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it's kind of 
Well, so, steps, for example. but it's the same thing. It's depending on what that code is that it sends to that remote. If the guy's sitting outside in the street sniffing when that Wi Fi fires off the open command, it can play back the open command. But so, you know, they probably randomize that, sure. Well, they normally have, they have an equation. But they they may. It. Yeah, they, they should. But until you play with it, you they, don't know. This is the very latest thing that was discontinued five years ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, so, and then some of those things, are only there's, you know, by random, there's 25 codes they So you scan it for a month and then they get your 25 pulses and, you know, and then they just play back all 25 until one trips it. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways to do stuff, and most people do it really stupidly. If you had a supercomputer that has to run for a hundred years, it's probably off the table. But I'm guessing if it's only 25 codes, yeah, yeah, you can spend a finite amount of time. Yeah, well, uh, that's what I'm saying. Most of them do not have if, if it's. A timed based code like like some of them are, you could figure out the algorithm. Yeah, well, that. but there there could be a guy that's reverse engineered that app too, and you just download the module for IOB and yeah. <laughs> walk by anywhere IOB and pop every door you go by. So I mean that I mean that's the feature of the Flipper Zero is yeah, people write modules. There's a disk like a depot for stuff I, people have written i mean i i guess it depends on what you want to do art do you want to become a hacker a code slacker yeah it's like the poor man uh, well script kitty it's like a script kitty swiss army knife for gadgets you want to change you know the street lights so you you know I've, I've always ready. wanted to change the street light so I never get a red light. Enable screen so, here. Um, they will arrest you for that, though. This, <laughs> this, all, this all sounds like it could get you in jail real quick. Well, you know, <laughs> it all depends on how you use it. You know? But I'm saying you can't get in trouble with this stuff. Most, most of the uh, ambulance lights that I've seen are they still use the uh, strobe light to trigger the the change? Yeah, yeah. I, use, I I found out the strobe light thing by accident one day. I had a, a headlight that would flash, and it accidentally triggered it. Triggered. It. I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, four years ago, we had people come in here and demonstrate. With Lock picking. Oh yeah, mechanically. So yeah, one of our members. Yeah, I mean, uh, next week is virtual. Next week's virtual. That's that's good to know. Okay. It's Noted. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like well, having a nine millimeter. Has it shot somebody today? You know. <laughs> yeah, he's still in the I I saw in the make it. He's still uh, in the lock picking space. lawyer. Hi. Have you yeah, ever watched yeah. the guy that came? To I, I haven't. To do that, mm, I, I have glimpsed it. I had not really looked, looked at it. it in depth. Oh, he he it's had nice. there was this uh, big yeah, I was a little pumpkin. I was a little concerned about that actually. Lock for a trailer hitch. He showed three different ways to. It, it's about the stupidest lock in the world, but it weighs eight pounds. It it looks like something that you're not going to cut through cut through or or deal with or whatever and it's the stupidest lock in the world he, he took a pop bottle uh like why well, i just threw away cut out a section of it and stuck it down in there <laughs> I just said it that, popped, popped right open <laughs> there's a, a really really expensive high dollar lock it's like four or five hundred dollars it's supposed to be pick proof and you can take a, a little piece of aluminum and shim it yep right down and pop the latch he was showing one i don't remember what the lock was but it was another one that looked like it should not have worked work. <laughs> well it should have, it should have been way better than it was yeah. and uh he took a little mallet and just went tap 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 and the lock opened right up just tapped, wow. and it was perfectly good he, he closed it 
Tap, tap, tap. Popped open. Vibrates the <laughs> trigger key loose. It, it, it's because it's spring loaded. It it makes the spring. Well, the, 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 the impacts cause that to open up so the lock slides mm -hmm. out. So it, it, he, he, he yeah, is. Yeah. He is quite interesting to watch. Yeah, Mr. Kevin McNick passed away about two months ago, I guess. The ultimate tester. The tester. Mm -hmm. Well, um, my nephew's friend that he grew up with always wanted to be a locksmith. And We'd go out when he was seven or eight years old and pick the locks on his dad's mobile. And his dad would come out and say, Who are locks? And he is now in his mid 60s and he's head of the Locksmith Association in Kansas City. And my nephew said he's been with him when he's eating pizza. At a pizza place, and they have a giant safe that they don't have the combination to. And he says, We're having a conversation that he's eating the pizza and he, and he is able to open the safe and reset it. So, <laughs> no, you, you have to have an extraordinary talent to be able to do. I can do two of those, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to eat pizza. Yeah. 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 I think. You know that's that's what makes lock picking lawyer so interesting because he the the amount of knowledge he has about how locks work and he could look at a lock and just go okay I know what that one is and I could get into that in like four minutes or I could get into that in like thirty seconds. <laughs> well, um, I needed another chip embedded key for my truck. And the dealership was like 125 bucks for it, but I can get one on the internet for 25. Jeremy, it's yeah, fine. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I like Jeremy. So I took it to Kansas City yes. with me, and I asked my nephew's friend, "Can you cut this for me?" And it's the second type of thing. He he lays it down, puts a blank in the vice, and he's talking to me. He gets out the file. He's having a conversation. He's just some guy. You may want to go there and check. Make sure the store. He's a deep member of the high wall. How much good? Oh, you. This is nice. Happen. This. That's nice. Well, that's not fair. You know, you do this for a living. I came in and asked him to. He just all right. Ten thousand dollars. Thank you very much. Yeah. You just to. He enjoyed. Or a nice new new monopoly new new new. Yeah. <laughs> he brings all the stuff for everyone. For, for the right. blue, fifty thousand. I haven't seen I, Jeremy in a while. Oh my! I was prepared to. Thank you. Hey, I don't I, run off with that. His, his skill. Well, but Maybe. when he's in ten thousand dollars, you give me your shoulders. Thank you very much. California is curtailing more solar power than ever before. They're kind of temp cutting back 10% and so 1.15%. And, and this, if you've been in the power business, which I have, I know exactly what's going on. You probably know exactly what's going on. They're curtailing them because they when do they generate power? Uh, not at night. Okay. During the day, and they all the generating the plants are are all ramped up to where they are and they're they got too much power but only at peak sunlight only at peak sunlight guess what everybody's doing at peak sunlight they're at work okay which is where the demand is they call it the duck now that looks like a duck duck neck over here and it peaks after dark Air and everybody's coming home and turn the air conditioners on. And this is stuff that I knew 30, 40 years ago. And these guys live. And now them somebody's going up with the idea I'll just put a giant capacitor in. Yeah. And you, you have a hard to press, right? Well, they're building a little hard. Uh, Did you turn it on? Battery banks. No. There's actually, there is one guy that's come up with a fairly interesting battery solution. 
Um, the liquid aluminum battery. Oh, why is it? Yes, we got several of them. Yeah, um, liquid aluminum. Yeah, there are issues with, of course, just like all of the story and the the salt one. Yeah, the, uh, the salt battery. They got. I haven't heard that there's really any issues with the liquid aluminum. It's only like a couple of years old, but 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 they're doing it as a like a semi lip size, or it's like a double trailer wide. Um, and then they use the molten aluminum. If anything goes wrong or the power goes out, that keeps the aluminum molten. The worst thing that happens is they re solidify and loses all the volume. <laughs> so there's no explosions, there's no nothing to go wrong. And it's Are they using the heat to generate steam? Yeah. Um, well, no, they use the, the Put the they they heat and melt the aluminum and then use the molten aluminum to hold the charge like a capacitor. So there and then and it's in a super insulated like Yeti container essentially, and then it can hold umpteen megawatts, it, it depending on how big they make the chamber, you know. And then that's what they're looking to use as solar and wind batteries, so that they can use it at night. How do you get the thermal energy? Back you have to, to heat it. So you, have input. you have a heat source yeah. in the liquid aluminum, but how does that energy in the form of thermal energy get converted back to electrical energy? Well, so the electric, the aluminum just holds the electrons like a capacitor. So I, 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 that, that, that theory is far beyond. I have no concept of what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it's it, it's like say you take a capacitor plate and you charge this side up, right? So when you need power, you, you know, like you turn off the other side, the electric comes back around and goes to the other side of the circuit. So like when your solar panels quit making energy and the wind power and you need demand, then it comes back off the battery to feed the grid. Yeah, right. I never uh, even uh, conceived of. Um, liquid Storm. metal being uh, capacitor. Capacitor. Yeah, they they uh, they are the latest du jour energy du jour thing is using uh, CO two instead of water uh, because it's 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 a lower temperature to superheat it, and they can improve the efficiencies of uh, a turbine generator and reduce the size of it size of it. To ten percent of a commercial size, and of course they got years to test this, but they they have a prototype, ten megawatt. But ten percent size is good, and improving the efficiency by ten percent is a big yeah. deal. It, it may not be a big deal if you deal dealing with two pennies on the table, but it's a big deal if you're dealing with the state's worth of power efficiency. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, that's what the, the, the guys who came up with that was they were looking to design a way to, I mean, it will never be very practical for home use or something, but you can power it. Really? Yeah. You know? Well, I see the people that say, oh, we're going to use a um, flywheel. Shark out the meeting? No, spin it in the, if we need no. the handle. No, no, no. no. How big would you have to make a flywheel? How fast would it have to turn? Well, they, they talk about using holes in the earth that are a mile deep and suspending on a cable. No, I never know. Gravity generators. But but they did say in this article about curtailing electricity, they did say they have a long-term plan to start moving in, you know, uh, charging stations, batteries, systems to... And weird to to do a day ahead, charge a day ahead, which is they're talking about ten years. They're talking about twenty years. Yeah, and they're talking about more lithium than we have, of course. But you know, we'll see how that comes out. Oh, but they have come up with a few that that's what like the aluminum, the aluminum yeah. was to replace the fact that we wouldn't need any foreign materials to produce them. We have all these things here in the states to make our own power. Forty-five yeah. years ago, people were saying. Fusion is just around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been looking. Fusion is just around the corner. 
Yeah, fusion is just around the corner. Yeah, fusion exists. So you What's that? Like, Actually, well, I've heard for twenty years. Yeah. Longer yeah. than that, we yeah. built that yeah. in the nineties. It's so cheap, we won't even meter the power. power. Infinite supply of hydrogen. I've heard it all. Yeah. So yeah, when they start going into production, but they, they are at least they're in the talking. Is this you know, or breach? Yes. It that's that's a Laura board. Okay. It's a serial connection to the to the computer. When I had it plugged in, it, it's supposed to be able to send messages, but apparently I can't get enough power from this laptop mm -hmm. to power the board. I plugged it into the thing and it's working. So, <laughs> so on the laptop, is that uh, oh. USB 2 or 3? Yeah, well, All right, two. <laughs> the uh, the add-on card is supposed to be three, but I still think this laptop is seriously underpowered for USB three. There's there's three onboard native ports, but if I plug a third thing into it, it uh like freezes right. the USB <laughs> it freezes the USB ports. I don't <laughs> have enough power. No, in the. That's odd, really, because an Intel, right? Uh, it's, well, it's an it, HP. It's an old machine. Yeah. But I anyway, what, 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 what Vicente is holding and playing with is the new M5 stack card computer. And it's a keyboard. It's a S3, ESP32 S3. Uh, it's got half a dozen different sensors, a little tiny screen on it, which is kind of hard to read. And uh, it's got the keyboard. It's, I, I think, I think I showed it off a little last week. Um, but I, I put a LoRa board attached to the, uh, to the Grove connector. You see and uh, this, this one here, is just sending a hello and a, and a number, and he's getting it, a, it saying hello and some number next to it. And if he types something, mm -hmm. then on the serial console, which we can't see, it will it would have popped up and said whatever it was he typed. Sending something. Did you? I I don't have the screen doing anything. He's sending me a message right now. So and if it was, weird. if I had the serial, that's what this was. This was the serial console that was supposed to show what you were typing. But it won't. It, have enough power. it don't have enough power. Does it need a 12 volt or something? It needs 5 volts. It just needs more amps than what the... Sometimes it's the cable, you know? The US, I, I've used this cable dozens of times. It's the computer. It's always the computer. It's never the cable. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to blame HP. I'm sure it's HP's it's fault. It's HP's yeah, fault. I'll plug it into the Panasonic. It probably works fine. Uh, I don't. I don't have a serial console. We have the computer, the cable, and the operator. <laughs> it's not the operator. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> this this worked. This worked. I promise it worked. At home. At home. <laughs> on my on my good desktop, it worked just fine. <laughs> which is not, which is not an not, HP, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I kind of guess that too. <laughs> now we, we 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 have had I've plugged there, there's three onboard USB ports, but with the camera and the microphone, if I plug one more thing in. None of it works. None of it works. It it freaks the hell out. And then, so Steve gave me a exploder. No, it's a it's like an MC uh, PCM CIA card, but it's the new it's the new card bus, not the I oh the square box thing. Yeah, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. It's a, it wasn't very popular. It didn't last long. It's it's a USB three, two USB three ports. 
you know. But if I plug it in there, it doesn't work. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, I can't really. I mean, you you, you could. Okay. I'm I'm never going to get this back. Vicente is going to keep it. But the, you could see the it's. That's kind of cool. It's actually yeah. it's actually displaying me. How much is that little buddy? Thirty bucks. Oh, that's right. Um, that, that's thirty bucks, and that's if if I were going to make a hacking device, I would take a thirty dollar toy like that and find some specific ten time. ten dollar wireless modules or fifteen dollar wireless modules and make your own make my own thing. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I think is kind of neat about the zero, the flipper zero is about you can just go grab a module, you don't have to write it yourself. But right. I, 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 I mean, because I'm not as technical as you are. I, I, I agree points. that ease of use is a thing, but yeah. it's yeah. probably hard to see. But it is actually it is actually changing. It's actually updating. I would love to do that stuff. I just don't take. It's hard to see, Art. It, it, but it's updating. There's a lot of things that won't take the extra time to do that I'd like to know. This is a long, long time ago. I was using Lotus One Two Three to do log normal standard deviations on air sampling results as part of my work. And I had written out the instructions for my technician to follow. And he was too vain to wear his reading glasses or use a ruler. So he would skip lines. So he might skip five lines of instructions. Oops. <laughs> Mac, Mac, your computer fucked up again. <laughs> so I finally decided to take it and, and this is real simple. It shouldn't be that hard. And I realized there were only 165 steps that you had to follow in the exact order. Yeah, yeah. Real simple. This is all written down. Yeah. If you read it. Ultimately, again, this is a long time ago. I uh, found that Lotus 123, you could embed those commands in a cell and make a menu. So I made a menu that said, leave this menu and cause havoc and destruction on my own. <laughs> uh, yeah. That even comes, it comes with a SD card mm -hmm. and an IR. Which I don't know how good the IR is, but my IR sender. So there's two modules that you don't even need to buy for thirty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, is it? I mean, it's okay. and and if you really, I mean, You're, you got the screen, you got the screens, the, and it's a color the screen, zero. not a black and white screen. Yeah. So it's nicer than the zero. And it's and it's got a full size full size keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a scroll a bar. Size, a full thing. size uh keyboard about the size of my palm. <laughs> That's one thing I think is kind of corny about the flipper zero is the controls are just a thumb wheel. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, yeah, that's kind of you know. But, Nintendo ish, but it, 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 it works for what it does. But if you have more than a lot of things on it, you got to scroll a long damn time. To <laughs> it's, got, it's got a microphone, it's got a speaker. I mean, it, yeah, it's a heck of a deal for 30 bucks. Yeah. And so there, there's a lot of neat things. All I, all I did, I took one of their example codes that was basically just a keyboard. You type on the keyboard and it would display it what you typed on, mm -hmm. on the screen. I changed like two lines of code and <laughs> like, oh, this is simple. Because <laughs> M5 Stack actually finally provided decent code to copy and figure out what, what's going on. 
The keyboard itself is a library. It's just keyboard library, keyboard.h. You just include that in, in the sketch. And you don't even have to, you don't even care how that works. It just works. <laughs> What's the, that is, that's actually the microcontroller. So that that's the, uh, they base this on the uh, Stamp S3, which is one of their products. Um, but it, I think they've soldered that to the board. I can't get that off of there. It, the stamp is, a, well, it's that size. It, it's a little tiny thing that's got some GPIO pins. It's got Castellated pins and, and regular, uh, regular style pins. And uh, this, is, this is exactly what it was meant for. It was meant to be fairly cheap. I think these are less, they're less than 10 bucks mm -hmm. for one of these modules. But that's exactly what it was meant for. It was meant to be soldered in per, it permanently in a project. project. Yeah. So, so essentially, you could build your own home version or whatever. And it would not have to talk to the internet when all of those come down. Um, th this does have Wi Fi, but yes. Well, but I'm I saying, mean, you, yes. you get your own home control system that doesn't have to talk so, to the internet. So if I bought, if if I was forward thinking enough and I actually had bought two of these the way I should have bought two of these, originally they came with a, with a, little menu system that you scroll through the menu with, with the arrow keys and uh, one of them was chat and you could just sit in the same room and it was using ESP now to, to chat back and forth. Yep. Basically it was the same same sort of idea that I'm doing only using without without the wireless module. Um, they are currently still out of stock right now. So um, I've already got a pre-order in for another one for myself because I should have bought two in the first place. <laughs> so I managed to actually find for during Prime Day the other day, they actually had remotes for um, Craftsman garage door opener for a pair of them for seventeen bucks. They oh, actually we lost our skips for real instead of being vapor hardware. Oh, um, they work nice. Um, heck, of a lot better than spending sixty bucks a pop. No, but I would like to be able to like monitor it and stuff like there it does. But I don't want it to use some other company third party. So you know, crap to that uh, somebody else can pop my door open and go really run through my own. Yeah, I, I understand. For years, for years, I have seen various projects that use some sort of keyboard or whatever. So, and in a Laura board for chat, and for whatever reason, they they just all seem really overly complicated. But that was exactly why I bought this was because I thought, like, ah, yeah, I could finally put together a little more communicator. How far will that go? Well, as it sits, not very far because the 433 uh, megahertz modules are pretty bad. It'll work inside of the complex at the apartment everywhere I everywhere I went in the apartment complex it, it worked but as soon as I got out onto the road and down to where I actually wanted to use it not so much not so much I wanted to play with lower because uh, I want the sensor for cars and crap coming in the driveway uh, so it, 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 it uh something that does that how, how far away is it half mile yeah it should be a problem Really, even the even the crappy because I know I was a good four thousand three thousand feet away in the 
in the uh, in the complex. Yeah. And then it takes them to the power. But it was just you were just detecting it. You weren't sending a. You weren't modulating it. You were just no detecting. It, it was sending hello world and oh okay. and a number and oh okay. When I was in grade school, one of my uncle used to play in a corridor. We picked up all the blasting of our that had been blown apart. And we soldered it together. We made enough wire to run a telegraph between his house and my house. And we didn't have anything to mount the wire. We just threw it over the top of the trees. Kansas City, the narrow way from the locks. And that over time, the wind moved back and forth and the wires settled down. And I can remember walking back to school and the truck came by and snagged our telegraph wire <laughs> and took off at about 40 miles an hour. That was the end of our communication system. <laughs> We had uh, out in the back backyard when I was very young. We had a tree fort that that Dad made, and uh, I had tin can telephone strung up from my room out to the. That worked really fun. When I was telling my wife about the telegram, that's what she thought I was doing. Her <laughs> two block stretching the string in tin cans. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> so the other the other thing I bought brought in, I was kind of hoping Steve would be here because he would appreciate this. Did I turn it on? He broke a server. He broke a server. Yeah. That sounds like, like a problem. So uh I don't know how I'm going to do this. Everybody can kind of remember that the A1 and A2 button I've been having problems with. Neither one of them actually work. So. Neither one of them actually do anything. So I came up with a brilliant solution. That is an ESP32 S3. And when I hit the button, When I hit the button, what? <laughs> it was to be doing stuff. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's a battery. <laughs> they were saying it wasn't the user. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's the user. Oh, <laughs> Seriously. We recognized my What was the button going to do? Well, the button was going to start the program. And it worked. You just have to trust me on this. It did actually work. Yeah, the Dell technician gets a call. It's the computer's not working. The guy says, Well, we know to look at the back of it. So well, it's really kind of hard to see. It's how come all the power is off in the building? <laughs> and he says, Do you have the original package for the equipment? The guy says, Yeah, it's that serious. It's like you're just too stupid to use a computer. All right. Okay. 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 It needed to be unplugged and plugged back in, apparently. We hit the button. All right. There you go.
We hit the button. Art, we hit the button. This button. Okay. And. Wow. It's, okay. It's way too bright. <laughs> but it, it started the. Uh, and the, and the application. It, it started the application up so I could write on the screen. Okay. Click your area of one and two button was worn out or something? No, they actually worked once. Um, but from what I have been able to read and gather on the uh, website, it's acting like a viewer. Whatever Panasonic did to make these two buttons, one of these buttons is supposed to activate a barcode scanner without any software needed. And so one of them may be a hardware thing that, that's tied directly to a hardware thing, but the other one is supposed to be acting like F2, like the F2 key. It doesn't act like the F2 key at all, not even a little. Um, but what I've what I've read is almost everybody who has put Linux on one of these machines, these two buttons don't work. And most of them can't get the rotate the but the lock the the rotate to to uh work. I figure out how to get that one to work. By using input mapper, I just map this to a different to a different key, and it so you map the function to a different key. I map the function to a different key, and now it says now it won't rotate no matter what I do to it. And that actually that actually worked, um, but it did it did require an extra piece of software. What I ultimately wanted was at least two more buttons, maybe maybe even three, so that I could start the journal software up that I want, and uh, you know do a couple of other functions. And then I remembered the S3 has USB uh, HID support, and this had a button, and I'm like, oh, perfect. When the machine actually recognizes the fact that I plugged it in, <laughs> it actually worked. Uh, you know, it actually worked just fine. It's not the Windows problem. Yeah. We'll let you slide. You it, it it's hurt. probably it's probably because it went to sleep on it. Yeah. Because it looks like it looked like it remapped one. it. It remapped my uh, my other functions too. So mm -hmm. so it probably I blame Windows. I'll, I'll blame Windows, even though it's Linux. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, I like blaming Windows better. I thought that was it. Uh, I'd love to, to just strap, have something that I could strap a little set of buttons here and plug it into the USB port. I tried just to plug this in. Directly, do you, do you have Bluetooth in this? Yeah, hmm? yeah, it's got Bluetooth, it fits, but the button's covered up. Get <laughs> into the button. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a, yeah, a Bluetooth keypad that you can use, also. Okay. but then it's the six well, buttons. Oh. You got what? What a Bluetooth keypad with six buttons, six buttons, four buttons, one button. In, in AliExpress, I think. Well, you get one of those little Bluetooth remotes like that. Yeah, mechanical uh, yeah. keyboard thing. Ten bucks for sure. Are you sure? I, I bought something from AliExpress that was some button button remotes, but it wasn't Bluetooth. It was something else. But that that's... Uh, that was my revelation about an hour before the meeting. I went, oh, that's kind of cool. That's that'll solve my problem, and then I could attach more buttons if I need to. That'll solve my problem. I need it. But I've got 
the 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 software um the, the software the Arduino software doesn't actually let you set certain keys. So I've got when I push this, it actually is telling the computer to set the bass louder on the speaker. But since this doesn't have that thing, I can use that function for something else. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't care what you actually tell the computer. All I care is to the it. software. <laughs> and there's somebody in Cleveland says, what's the matter with the lights? <laughs> what, what happened? Well, no, no. See, we're not connected to the internet right now, so so we're good. We get the lights in the library working today, actually. Oh. Oh, yeah. uh, but I, I actually, I thought Steve might appreciate my weird solution uh -huh. to the I problem. Hear why? Uh -huh. He put the best of me. He, uh, if he broke, if he broke the the servo, he may not want it. I said it was still coming, but let me have a backup before he left. <laughs> and he broke it this morning, so I would have thought he'd have a backup by now. Yeah. I said, because I'm running late, but I'll get there eventually. I'm rebuilding a database server, and it's time since then. His early morning messages to me was he pulled a hard drive out of an HP Reliant, and it just continuously reduced. Going to reseed all the rain, but that was like five hours later because my phone wasn't receiving all the day. Nah. So I don't know if you were probably well, tell, tell him to get here so he could get a free iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Send him some text or a picture. Free iPads for you. Free iPads. <laughs> oh, that would be that would be uninterruptible power supply that's on the table. It's even the three button. Can can you can you send that to him? That would that would probably work really well. You make the little thing that you stick to the side and just even the if there there's a six button version and a three button version. I can't imagine why I would need six buttons. I actually was was thinking about I was thinking about uh, being able to maybe just remap this, you know, in software or something. Just have this be a multifunction. Hold it in a long press for, for something and a short press. <clears throat> the game I started playing Starfield has all kinds of crap like that where it's everything's E because it was converted from a console game or something. Right. E does E or F does everything about driving me nuts because it's like <laughs> Tappy does one thing, hold E down for a couple seconds, it does something different. Hit E and B in between it does something else. And it's like you know, what the or backs up or you know it does oh my god. <laughs> about to throw me nuts this hold, morning. Hold E for, for half a minute and it does this. And... Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's like you hit F, brings up your scanner. You hold F for a half second longer and it turns on the flat flight. You know, it's like there's a big difference between that and the other. You know, it's like and then if you hold it too long, it goes, does something instead of a flashlight and the flashlight still doesn't turn on. And the bad guys are shooting you and you're like, I can't see where the steps are or the hole in the floor. Or the... <laughs> well, having, having two buttons would be really nice. Having well, well, having one button with multi functions is, is doable. And I'm sitting there, like, I got a keyboard. We're not only using five keys. I'm like, can I use some of the others? For God's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Why does everything got to be E or F? I got a full size keyboard right here. What's <laughs> up? Your thumb's too big. The keyboard's the right size. It's the fingers. I got a full size keyboard for a mouse. Come on. Uh, this has got a mouse. It's got like 12 buttons or something on it. I would well, try that. that, that would, there, there's some the the Arduino software will emulate mouses, and there, you know, one of the mouses had like 
dozens of buttons. I'm like, yeah. I could emulate mouse buttons because there's no way I would ever buy a mouse that had that many buttons on. <laughs> I was looking at there, there's one now that and it's actually not horribly expensive, but it has interchanging plates. So if you ever saw the uh it's called a Naga and had a like a six wheel button yeah. on the side for playing uh League of Legend. Well now they have like and you can take that slot off and slot a different thing on the side. Like 42 buttons on the side. And I'm like sitting there looking at how the hell do you even tell which button you're pressing? Why do I you mean, need that many buttons on your mouse? Uh, <laughs> I can understand having several, but that seems a little extreme. I, I play some things where it would be nice to have more than the five or six buttons. And, like, and I don't really play with Maya much anymore, but there's... It, there is definitely a nice market for extra buttons there, but I don't know how the hell you tell 40 different buttons. That, that's all that's, that's the, uh, space that big. That's the difference between a regular consumer and a gamer. More oh, buttons, yeah. more buttons, more buttons. Well, I need three buttons. Thank you. How do you, <laughs> how do you individualize buttons that small, though? It is like, is I, I mean, I've sat in just felt around on it trying to think of like if you're in a panic and doing something how the heck you only hit your one own. you need while you're you know aiming something and doing something else at the same time well, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking around. you're an F-22 pilot and you just launched a series of <laughs> missiles yeah that was, oh, I'm going oh. to hit the button right next to it <laughs> assuming it's your your ass. Ass. oops I'm like wait a minute that wasn't the rocket launcher, was it? That was the fuel tank. Oh. Well, I just, I don't know, man. I'm too old, I guess. I, it's just the, the Arduino library for, for this thing. Um, it, it, it emulated, there, there, I was looking through the mouse emulator, because I, Originally, it, it was just set up to do volume control up and down. And I'm like, well, that's not at all useful for what I want. So I was looking through it to see what other buttons. And there was one that it, it had, I don't know, it would emulate mouse buttons. This is a six button button. Okay. okay. Without the, uh, without all the color? Yeah, the color means power. Would light up. Who's game camera? That's actually a security camera. That's my Lumix camera. Oh, uh, there's a deer. Uh, art. Yeah. That's a new one, a $30, $30 camera. The pictures are, are as good as the other one. They're, they're, they're pretty good. I think they're four megapixel. That's, it has a built-in light, too. You can turn it on, but it takes a second for it to turn it change over to color. It has a spotlight built-in. Thirty bucks. So what we really we were looking at infrared. Yeah, infrared on. I think battery powered. Uh no, not this one. I've I have one that's battery powered, but it doesn't like to work off the battery. But actually, I do have one that is battery powered. It's pretty good, but you have to keep the solar panel. It does have to point at the sun, oh, okay. which I haven't licked that one yet. So is that one wired then? That one's wired, yeah. That one is a thirty dollar. It's two point four gigahertz only and four four gigabits, so you, four megabits. You, you just provide power out to the tree or something. Yeah, I've got an extension cord. I've got a couple of them out there actually. And I was going. Mm, that's so that's, that's like a five volt uh, extension cord. No, it's one hundred twenty. And I got the adapter out on the tripod. Oh, okay. If, if, uh, like you were saying, no power out, out where you wanted to put your lower board, if you took something, is this a chrome machine? Small that yeah. had a battery in it. Yeah, this, he, he gave me this one, this old one from him. A USB <clears throat> or a not bad. Well, yeah. uh, and uh, this solar charge battery, if that where, actually where is a spot? Hmm? power. Okay. Laura, 
And it done the the it's growth with really low power. Yeah. It's broke. So they're broke. That's why I'm using the damn word. So we just jumped in. I said, I'm going to use the I know you got plenty of the battery out on this one. Watch that one. Got four gigs. Yeah. Plenty of power. Oh, look. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's a leaf. Yeah. You just missed the demo. You did. But he's in time for the iPads. You need iPads. They're yours. Take them. Well, put put Linux on them. You need those. Two of them look like they're ready for target practice. So you can call that. Two of already got the target practice. <laughs> they're not ready. They've been ready. I would probably be cleaned up if it still takes a charge. I will give. They have impressive displays. Oh, this is the old style. Yeah. Here. 64 gig ones. That's the last model of that one, I think. The high end one. The expensive one. Yeah. Well, they were like seven or eight hundred bucks when they came out. Yeah. For 64 gig. Doesn't do it. No power. Got to recharge back up. Good, 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 good luck. I with bet that. it still works, though. Yeah, probably. The, the big question is, is have they been locked? Apple. That locked. one won't lock. Sounds good to me. So because because you are Steve. Therefore. Oh so, he has this. I have I got the lock. Okay. The rotate to actually mm -hmm. do what it's supposed With to be. It's a nice icon too. That was already built into the thing. Yeah. But I had to uh, go into the input mapper mm -hmm. and remap this key to something else and then inject that into the the keyboard so that it it's interrupted. It's it's faking, it's faking the, the key press. Neither one of the A1 or A2 work. Period. I've Googled it several times and, and many, 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 many. Hundreds of people maybe, have, maybe have they, problems. Maybe they are associated to a, a pin in the, in the connector. I don't know, but many people are having problems with with A one and A two. It's it's a thing. So, just before the meeting, about an hour before the meeting, I came up with this brilliant idea: an external A button. Yeah. Very cool. Um. It needs to be refined a bit, but, but. so that's acting as a keyboard. It's sending the the code that it sends is actually base boost code that okay. I just mapped to do something else. Because of course this doesn't have base boost, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't even have sound, so it doesn't matter. But uh, sound that surprises me. It, it, Remember, I bought I bought this one cheap because oh, it's yeah. found in, yeah. and I don't care. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, I, suddenly it, it occurred to me that the S three would do HIDs. Yeah, cool. And sweet. It, he found he he knows of some uh, Bluetooth buttons. That I could program mm -hmm. relatively cheap, and three three Bluetooth buttons might actually do the trick. Yeah, even better than this mess. <laughs> if that has an internal USB port, just wiggle some wires around. Yeah, then but you I can make the actual buttons on the front do something. No, I mean, wire them into something like that on an internal USB port. What I have, what I have read um, from people who have Windows, mm -hmm. not A1 was actually hardwired to start a barcode scanner that was an option. And the barcode scanner has its own software. It didn't use Windows. It didn't use anything. You would hit the A1 button. And it was a keyboard with it. And it would do something. Well, probably paired. Um, 
A2 was supposed to be mapped to F2. A2 worked that one time, that one bloody time it worked. It's never worked since. And mm. I, I actually, from what I've read, I think I was lucky that it worked once. So these two buttons may actually be hardware, but or uh, actual connected to yeah. hardware. Um, yeah, well, I, I see what Steve's saying. You just open it up, cut the wires, and yeah, yeah. and put it where because you know it's going to be on a ribbon cable. Yeah, and it's a matrix. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I actually kind of, kind of thought my. Uh, yeah, that's cool. I've got if if you want it. I mean, if it's got an internal USB port, I've got some of those little square inch of computing Leonardos. Oh that yeah, they have like five pins on them. They've got the and uh, do HID. They do do the HID because I I use them for mouse jigglers. Um, they were great for that. For what, please? Mouse chain. When I was working at the lab firm, people would bring me a computer. It's broken. Okay, well, we've got a, 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 a OU thing, thing in Windows that would turn on the screensaver after 10 minutes and lock it. Okay. So I'd stick my little mouse jiggler in there, and then I had all day to work on it because it couldn't lock. Okay. And every 30 seconds, it just moved like five pixels left, 10 pixels right, five pixels left. Um, and it blinked the light on it too at the same time. It so, was so little and, movement, okay, it folks. wouldn't notice it. Right. And, and oh, I was that's even better, dear. Attorneys who kept having their computer display turned yeah. off when they were in the middle of a I'm, I'm not acknowledging that because you're sitting here. Tell it to stay on forever. You can't. Not, I mean, you couldn't in our company. You can barely do that in Windows now. Yeah. Well, power management rolling out on this. I, I was telling Barry, I was looking through the software because because originally this was mapped to increase the volume. And I was telling Barry, I was looking through through the library, and there's like a a mouse HID that has like twelve or thirteen buttons. Map map the buttons to it because yeah. I'm not going to buy a mouse that has more than two, three three buttons, maybe four buttons. Well, okay, so your generic mouse has five buttons: left, right, scroll up, scroll down, and click the wheel. Yeah. I'm not going to buy a mouse that's got more than that. Yeah. One of my kids has a mouse that has 12 buttons under the thumb. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. And Barry was yeah. 42 buttons. There's a 42 yeah. button mouse. <laughs> but I don't know how you can tell what buttons what are they. Yeah. See, originally it was it was supposed to, when you hit it, it would increase the volume. Mm -hmm. Useless. So I found Bass Boost. Base boost, base boost. That's base. Notepad. That's base. No, this, this is better than notepad. This is journal pad. That scribble scribble. <laughs> Doctor writing, I see. <laughs> you make a big box. <laughs> Can I get a prescription? That's, that's actually. Uh, <laughs> it it started that. I've got it set to start the wrong program. It's starting journal, not journal plus. And I want journal plus. That's the difference. Um, More toys. Because uh, journal, journal plus starts full screen and it's got a few extra features. And journal always, always starts no small screen. No plus plus. Yeah. I have recently discovered Notepad QQ. <laughs> which is the Linux version of Notepad++. Mm -hmm. It is, it, Very nice. it has the one feature of Notepad++ that I have to have, that you can close it at any point and it opens back up with all the same files. I love that. No, Notepad QQ. Yep. Well, I love Notepad++. <laughs> I have <laughs> that 45 tabs on my 
Mm -hmm. When I do coding, I see what I'm just learning. Yeah. I lose track of what one step that they did and back with that. Make that the first one. Wow. And that, that's the code. <laughs> <laughs> for a project that was the last three, three months ago that you got exactly what that code went to. <laughs> yeah. You need it later. They got a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's. There was some something I was doing for work and we got bought and then I had to convert a lot of data and I was trying to fix the code to sync rate and I couldn't it was, I so I had dummy code and I had the real data because I wanted to dump the real data back into the site when I got the code fixed. Mm -hmm. So but then like after a few dozen iterations, it's like, all right, we're Page was the real data, which one was the junk data? <laughs> well, this tells you how old I am. I had an office mate who refused to put in the date on the computer. And she filed everything under the 1st of January, 1980. And all of this. The discs, although the floppies, she left an entitlement. When she quit, I was left going through all of these files, and every one of them had the same damn date and the same file name. <laughs> uh, was it a copy of the same file over and over again? It, I don't. I don't recall now, but I'm thinking it was version one, version two, version three. But it's not the name. So what I couldn't tell, because they all had yeah. the same name and the same date. So my previous employer um, used SharePoint and had for each person that worked for HR, the company employee manual was stored under different employees' names. So none of them were labeled. They all they were all labeled employee handbook, but they, they were dated in the old SharePoint. But it was also based on what employee was which, you know, who had the current employee thing. And I asked them, and I tried to explain it to them. I was like, you need to tell me which one you want. Well, because we were going from SharePoint 2 to SharePoint 2016 or 2018 or something like that. We were skipping like nine versions where we we're going to lose the dates on those files from the export to import because we didn't weren't buying like five versions of the bridge migrate the data, you know. Ah, you know, imported all four copies of those into the new SharePoint. And they're like, which one's which? I'm like, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't have version numbers in here. You don't have version in here. It was all in there by dates. And I asked you, told you we're going to lose the dates. Which one you wanted to keep? You wanted all four of them. <laughs> That's a good place. I know what that is. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to use this. I've got it plugged in, but it's not working. Okay. The button actually button. Yeah, I guess plugged in the itself. But other than that, yeah. it's just gonna forever. Technicality, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I would check the battery to see if it is taking any sort of charge. I'm I'm not looking to repair it. I'm looking to give it away. Okay. I don't want to give it away. I if you haul it away, the objective has been met. Yes. <laughs> I, I have sufficient UPSs. I have one of those. I will get that one right here, and that's too many. Dad has brought me like seven of those from work. Mm -hmm. That exact model, actually. And they have three fifties, like two or three Gaylords of them down at where he lives. And I'm like, I don't want to the cord off so you have something useful. <laughs> I, I would give this the battery that's in here is $14. If you cut the plastic around it so you put the next size battery in it, that's a $15 battery. 
and it goes from being a 350 to a 550. So it's it's a good upgrade to do. Uh, I'm sure uh, this yeah. is useful for a lot of people in applications. Well, you can make an extension cord and just yeah. set it on the outside of the box. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. And put it, them over the it, it, it makes a good uh, door stop. Yeah. Well, I use one for it. Mm -hmm. But we used one for at the shop. It, it was a fantastic door stop. I have <laughs> backups. XP. I think fifteen hundred. He's, he's slowly making its way to to somewhere. It's a gravity problem. He is. He has reached his objective. <laughs> his objective is basically don't go home with with more stuff than he <laughs> left does. with. Yes. I, yeah. And and I failed that objective. I I'm taking a helicopter. This time, uh -huh. cupcakes instead of this. I thought about that. <laughs> yeah, more cupcakes, not this crap. Today I had to go to Columbus and load two thousand pounds of bricks. Oh, I don't know for the document. Did not have time to make that bricks. I'm sorry. No. Okay, then why are you why are you bring, buying a ton of bricks? You're bringing a ton of bricks home. <laughs> My daughter needs to rebuild the fireplace. Oh. There's a whole bunch of bricks over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look at those every time I go by. I think they missed one. Yeah. Yeah. You got about two minutes, Scott. I have 4,000 bricks in my backyard now. She didn't want those. No, oh, of course no, not. Uh, no, we're not in right. the color, right? Exactly. <laughs> she, she, she wants the ones from Columbus, of course. <laughs> okay, I have to ask, what's the difference between the Columbus bricks and the Cincinnati bricks? <laughs> They're the wrong. They're the wrong. Real I mean, exactly correct. <laughs> it's okay. a spray paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the it works pretty well. Oh, I, I use uh, Menard's bricks. Great ones. Hey, Mr. Art, I'm going to yeah. shut down. I'm going to shut down so I can put some of this stuff away. We got about okay. 10 minutes. So I will you're, see still, you. you're still going to be able to uh, upload the, um, the video to uh, YouTube, right? Yes, but it'll it'll be pretty much where it started at. So pretty much. Okay. We we've lost we lost a half hour basically. So. Okay. But uh, so is so is this a problem with the hardware at the library or? Oh no, I think they're I think they're upgrading stuff because okay. it's it's been bad the past month or so. There's a sign on the door when I came in that said the internet was flaky. Yeah. It. I think they're upgrading stuff. So, okay. But well, next, we'll next week, well, anyway, I, I will be at the house. So, I will see you next week. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.